Hi everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And I'd like to welcome you to tonight's release party presentation. Tonight I'm going to show you a whole bunch of brand new stamp sets and I'm going to show you a project featuring a couple of them. So let's get right into it. The first stamp set I want to show you is a brand new one by Teresa Momber. Teresa's done it again with a brand new set in her Framescape series. Introducing Framescape's Window of Wishes. This beautiful window stamp is perfect for creating beautiful scenes and more. There are even curtains so you can do fun paper piecing and coloring and texturizing techniques. And the window will work with tons of other stamps in your collection. Lisa Hetrick's newest set is gorgeous. Introducing Hello Beautiful. This large mason jar can be used with or without the handle to create beautiful bouquets for any occasion. Mix this with her You Are stamp set for more beautiful options. Imagine how pretty this hanging jar will look hanging from the pine bough from last season's holiday stamp TV kit. The options here are endless. Beth Seleka's newest set, Liam and Liz Lyon, is sure to be a hit with anyone on your card making list. You have the entire pride here with both mom and dad Lyon and this sweet little baby cub. With fun, quippy greetings, this set will be perfect for kids of all ages, including mine. I am so excited to introduce our newest illustrator and her gorgeous new set. Emily Schrepfer is a talented artist and hand lettering buff. She teaches this art to customers from all over here at our flagship store. Lettered and Lovely is her first stamp set with Gina K Designs. Filled with beautiful quotes, you can mix this set in with any set in your collection. The next set I want to show you is a brand new stamp set from me, and this one is called You Make Me Smile. You have a large floral image here that can be stamped a couple of times on a single piece of card stock to create a beautiful background. And with these cute little greetings, this is an all-in-one quick little set to take with you on the road if you want to do some fun coloring. Now I want to show you our brand new incentive set. And this one is called Thank You Friend. It's got these beautiful lilies and it's got some really nice greetings. I designed this one to have an outside and an inside greeting. So on the outside, you could put, friendship isn't about who you've known the longest. And then on the inside, you can say, friendship is about who came and never left your side. This flower is fun to color with Copics, colored pencils, and watercolor. And it's yours free with any $75 purchase. You don't have to put it in your cart. It will automatically ship with your qualifying order. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about the new packaging that you're seeing here for our stamp sets. So in the past, we have done inserts where the image was printed on the outside, but it was much smaller than the actual size of the stamp set. And now that we have a retail store and we're doing a lot of wholesaling, we want to make sure that our customers are able to see the exact size when they look at the stamp set. But some of you really like using the index sheets to kind of have a picture of all of the stamp sets that you can keep. So what I would recommend, and it'll be very easy to do, is, for example, on the back here, it gives you some step-by-step -step instructions, too, on how to keep them clean and how to store them and how to use them for the first time. The name is indexed here on the back. And what you can do with this is you can peel the cover sheet off of this stamp set. Actually, you want to peel it off the back like this. So you want to peel the whole back off of the stamp set. Then you can ink up the entire thing, and then you can either lay it on top and press down or you can keep it laying on its back and you can take your cardstock and lay it on top and then just rub your hands over it and you will get 
the entire impression on this sheet with the name indexed on the back. So you can do that as soon as you get your stamp set and then you can just clean it off using the tidy towel, put the back back on, and it will be all ready and indexed, ready to go. So I just wanted to show you how easy that will be to continue to index your stamp sets the way you have and the, the way you're used to in the past. And for those of you that are using the new pocket storage, that's a fun way to have your index sheet in here with the stamp set. So you put the stamp set in here, you put that index sheet in there with all of the images on it, and then you always will remember which pocket to put these back in. So I wanted to just show that to you before I get started on the new card project that I'm going to do tonight. So the stamps that I'm going to use for my card project tonight are the brand new You Make Me Smile stamp and I'm going to use Emily's new Lettered and Lovely stamp set. I'm also going to use my Misty. I'm going to use a little bit of water that I have here in a jar and some Zig markers. And the colors that I'm using are bright yellow, I'm using ochre, mid green, English Lavender and Deep Violet. So this is going to be a bright purple flower. Then I also have a water brush that does not have any water in it and I'm really just using this if I need to do a little extra blending. The technique that I'm going to show you is kind of a dry watercolor technique. Even though the Zig markers are kind of like already wet watercolor, I'm not going to be adding any extra water unless I need to blend just a little bit here and there. Now I have a piece of watercolor cardstock and this is the Canson cardstock and I will link that below the video so that you can find it easily. I really like this cardstock. Um, it was recommended to me by one of my staff members and I tried it and I like how smooth it is. It is all cotton. There are two different sides. There's a little bit of a rougher side and a little bit of a smoother side. It doesn't matter which one. You can use either one of them. But um, I think you're really going to like the way this feels. Now, if you don't have this, of course, you can use the Tim Holtz cardstock. That is a great watercolor cardstock as well. So I'm going to use an embossing magic pad and I'm going to rub that over the surface of this card just on the top here. And I'm going to start with the small, this flower image from this mini stamp set. Now I'm going to begin by laying this stamp down onto my card like that. So I want this to come in from this angle here. And I want to make sure that when I do that, that I have enough room left to add my greeting. And the way I look at my greeting, sometimes you can just either take the index sheet off or you can just hold that clear stamp set right up to the card and you can see exactly where that's going to be and I think we have plenty of room there. I might just scooch it over a little bit and I think that looks pretty good. Okay so now I'm going to pick that up using my Misty and I'm going to ink this up using some of the Versamark ink. So we're going to do some watercolor but we're going to do it over embossed images. And I really like to do that because I'm not a real talented watercolor artist, so the, uh, the lines being raised from the embossing powder really help me to stay within the lines. Now I have my fine detail white embossing powder here in this container. So I'm going to emboss that part first. All right. And if there's any anywhere you don't want it, you can just brush it away. And I know that's a little difficult to see, but I'm going to heat this up. I always like to start my heat tool a little bit first, just to make sure it's nice and hot. And that kind of helps with the warping. It doesn't warp as much because you're not heating it as long. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat that. And that's melting very quickly. Looking good. All right. And then once you've got that done, 
Now, for my next one, I'm going to throw this up here into the corner. I have a misty corner up here, and I'm going to just do that. Now, I'm going to figure out where I want this one to come in. Actually, let's see here. I might want to flip this around a little bit here. I might. Let's see here. I think I'm going to do this. I really don't need the corner for this one. Okay. And now I'm going to place this one right in here like this. And you'll be able to see exactly where the other image is because it's all embossed and it's very shiny and you'll be able to see it. It's hard to see on the camera though. Okay, now I'm going to go back with that embossing magic pad and just tap over that again because there might have been a little bit of sticky Versamark on there and I don't want anything that might have shifted to catch some powder. So, all right, lay that down, give it a good rub and I'm going to emboss the rest of that. Looking good. All right. Let me move this out of the way. And again, this is all hot now, so I don't have to preheat it too much. It's still hot from before. All right. There we go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. So that you can see what I'm going to do here with these markers. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with a lighter purple marker. And I have a little piece of scrap paper here that I'm just going to keep off to the side. And what I'm going to do with that is if my marker gets contaminated by the other color too much, I am going to um, just scribble off the contaminated color. So I'm going to start, let's start with this large flower image here. I'm going to start by adding a little bit of that dark purple down here near the bottom. Then using the lighter purple, I'm going to add that light purple all along here. And then I'm going to pick up some of that darker purple and blend it together. And then I'm just going to tap some of that off and just blend those two colors together. All right, now I'm going to do a couple of these petals here. You really don't need a lot of the dark purple. You can see I'm using just a tiny bit because, boy, with this dark color, a little bit goes a long way. And having that variation in purple, having this light purple in there, I'm starting at the top again. I'm going to work my way down into that darker purple and then work my way back up. I'm going to clean off my brush, kind of go over the line there. And you can see how those two purples are blending really nicely together. You can make some of them brighter and some of them paler. That's kind of the fun of watercoloring is to have all those different variations in there. But these zig markers are really fun to use. And I, I've, I really want to try some of the other um, markers that are on the market. I'm going to grab a paper towel here too because paper towel really helps if you have some... Um, areas that you just want to blot up. Maybe they're a little bit too dark. You can do that. If an area is really dark and you don't like how dark it is, you can grab your water, kind of run some water over it to lighten it up a little bit and then blot that up. And that'll lighten the whole thing up and then you can go back with whatever color you want to change it up a bit like that. 
So I really want to try some of the professional watercolors that are out there, like the Daniel Smith and some of the other ones. I haven't tried any of those yet. Um, I've been meaning to, but I love the Zigs because they're they're so user friendly, and because I'm I'm not a pro, I feel like they're very forgiving. So if you are looking for a watercolor to try to just get your feet wet, I highly recommend the Zigs. And I also really like the Arteza markers, and there the price point on those is even a little bit lower. So you can see what's going on here, how that color is coming out. I really like that light purple too. I'll bring some of that darker purple up there, but I don't want it to go too far. So you can see kind of just by going back and forth between them, you get the lights and the darks, but it's not really hard at all. Tiny little bit of that dark purple, and then a whole bunch of the light purple. <laughs> and then bring that dark purple up into the light purple. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this flower, and I know that some YouTubers speed up their coloring, and I, that's great, I, I probably should do that, but I am going to let you watch me finish this whole one flower here before I show you how the finished card ended up looking, just in case somebody wants to see it. If you don't want to see it, you can certainly zip ahead too to the end of the video. But sometimes it's nice to be able to kind of see how things go. You might see something cool in it and wonder how it looked or how it started. I'm going to go a little bit darker into these areas here because we're going to do some bright yellow in there. and grab my little this tiny little piece of paper towel but it's doing the job all right so a couple more petals this is a big flower this is a very relaxing flower to color I've also done some fun colored pencil techniques with it and there's just a lot of fun ways to use this to color this and every color combination I've tried has come out beautiful I I think it is um, it resembles a peony but um, peonies come in so many different colors and so many different varieties I did not realize how many varieties I was on a um, on a website looking at peonies when I was designing some future stamps and I was just looking at some of the different styles there are and even though they're all called peonies, they look very, very different. Some look like more like roses, and others look very, very tight, like the petals are very tight, and others are very fluffy and lacy. So, And they're all different colors. They come in a whole variety of colors. So you can't go wrong coloring a peony. And there's also a lot of different styles of peony art which is neat. Some of it's very modern and some of it's very realistic. It's definitely my favorite flower to color. Look at how fun this is. And I still really haven't had to do too much with the water. This one a little bit lighter. The contrast between the two is really fun. And then I see one more little petal down here and one over here. So I'll do those. Oh, and there's one here too. As you're looking at these in the, the bright light with the 
white embossing powder sometimes the whole image doesn't really pop out at you until you really start to color and then you're like oh okay there's there's another petal that's part of the petal that's not part of the leaf and you kind of will start to um, see the whole thing come to life just blot that up a little bit add a little bit more there and this one okay is there really another one right here i think there is there we go it's so close to the edge it's hard to see it okay so now i'll show you that up close you can see what that looks like all different variations of purple there's a little spot missing up there okay so now for the you're gonna love the yellow part because that's super easy i just took this um bright yellow and i just rubbed it right over all of those little insides of the peony like that and then if you want you can take a little piece of paper towel and just blot that in case there's any laying on the embossing powder now for the greens i started with the mid green just coloring the leaves totally solid as if I was just coloring with a marker. This one goes right off the edge there. Okay, there's another leaf down here. And then for the stems, I actually just ran the brush right along the stem and some of the little indentations pick up the color or you can kind of go right along the outside, which I can do over here too, just to accentuate that stem a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab some of that ochre marker. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown in there Just to give it a little shading. And then I'm going to go back over it again with the mid green just to blend it out. And that just gives you a little bit of additional color in there. And you can see what that looks like. So these purples, they really glow. Now, once you've colored all of these flowers in, then you can choose your greeting and stamp it right into that empty area using some black onyx ink. Now I wanna show you my finished card project. Here is one that I colored completely. You can see all of the different colors of purple in there. And down at the bottom, I added mother is another name for love. So this is going to be my Mother's Day card for my mom this year. I just love that saying, and I love how pretty those flowers turned out. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's release party presentation. All of the products that you've seen tonight are now available at GinaKDesigns.com, so you don't have to wait to place your order. If you're watching us over at Stamp TV, you can join in on our party chat thread and see beautiful projects by our design team. And you can also play along with the contest questions and our release party challenge. Thank you so much for watching tonight's video, and I'll see you soon back here on Stamp TV.